Dude, I'll, I'll be doing this for a long time. And you get in this mentality, it's you doing it. Amen. Amen. You do. Amen. You do. It's just it's hard. You do. And you still, because I, I saw that. I saw, we were standing there. there two, we were just two goofballs trying to get something cold. And when I was sitting down there, I could see it. Jesus was standing there too. That's right. In the flashback of it. And he said he, he, he fixed it. And so, so many times we're, we're uh, relying on our faith. Yes. <laughs> now we do, you do release your faith, yes. but it's Jesus that does it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Wow. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's insane. The older I get, the longer I do this, the more I find out I don't know what I'm, you know, I'm just learning stuff. Praise Simple Jesus. stuff. Yeah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles to Matthew 4. I'm going to read you one verse from Four seventeen, and we'll go to the Romans. Or you can look up here. Can y'all see that? Okay. Does everybody can see that? Yeah. Is it big enough? Is it big enough? I saw it. Okay. Praise God. This is something the Lord dropped on my heart this morning. All right, you got you all right, Pam? Yeah, yeah. You can show that as you read. <clears throat> this is Matthew four seventeen. This is from the New American Standard Version. It says this. From that time, from that time, Jesus began to preach, or make a declaration, preaching is making a declaration, and say, this is what he said, repent, repent, uh, metanoia there in the Greek, metanoia means to change your mind, or change your direction, change your mind, or change the way you're thinking. For why? Why should you change the way you're thinking? For the kingdom, the dominion of heaven, is at hand. The dominion of heaven is at hand. And how long ago was that? Over 2,000 years ago, wasn't it? Mm. That Jesus said that. Sure. For 2,000 years, the church has been debating when the kingdom was going to come to the earth. That's been a major, uh, major, maybe not for you, but it's been a major controversy in, 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 all, in, in the church about when, the, when Jesus was going to. Many people you know, believe that when Jesus returns physically to the earth, that the kingdom was going to be initiated. But Jesus said right there, right there, he was there then, he said the kingdom of God, of heaven, excuse me, is at hand. What's at hand? It's as close as your hand. When he laid hands on that man and spoke the word over him, the kingdom came to that man. Understand what the kingdom of heaven is. The kingdom of heaven is what's like what is like in heaven coming to the earth. Mm. Amen. Amen. Do you think it's, oh, let me ask you a question. Do you think there's any sickness in heaven? No. There are any hospitals in heaven? No. Is there their bank or their banks or their ATMs? No. no. There's no need for it. Everything is provided. Amen. Complete provision. What we going back to what was put on last week about peace. Remember, peace was that which was taken away. It was when it said shalom. It was it was you were saying shalom to someone. It was the, you were b believing for the restoration of anything that had been taken from that person. Sure. It could be your health. It could be your finances. It could be your relationship with your with your loved ones. Amen. It could be your relationship with God. Anything, anything, think of this, anything that was taken away, that was taken away from you, and, and I, have, I assume this, that most of us have had things that have been taken away, mm -hmm. or we, 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 were, we were even born into situations where things that we should have had was missing. You know, you could have been born with some kind of deformity or some kind of, born with some kind of uh, illness. You know, they said it's, uh, what is it, Chrissy? Would you, a child is born con congenital. Congenital. congenital uh, yeah, that's what. There are a congenital defect in the heart or in some organ. You're born that way. So you're already, you, you, you started out life already with peace being taken from you by the enemy because of the fall of man. But Jesus came, listen, Jesus yes. came yes. to restore our peace. Yes. Restore our shalom. Amen. Listen, He is our peace, and He has broken down. He says it. It actually says it. Closer. He has broken down the middle wall of partition. Now, there's for it referring to the, the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles, because Jesus had a covenant with God, 
the Gentiles didn't. But now Jesus has broken down that wall of separation so that we could all partake of that that blessing. Amen. Right. That covenant brought that covenant, that commonwealth. That's right. It's called the commonwealth. The common wealth. It means that we have it in common. We have a shared wealth. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Are you following me? Because so, so Jesus said, repent. Now, repent. It's very important. Uh, <clears throat> Tashiva. Tashiva in Hebrew means there's two things that, that, that Jews, and we're so, that today is, is Rosh Hashanah, which is the feast, the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets. It lasts until, until I think the Tuesday. And it precedes what's called the Ten Days of Awe that, that end in Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. You know, these 10 days of all the Jews, they, we got a shofar, I might get some other water. But they blow the shofar continually, because during, during these 10 days, this is what the Jewish people believe, especially the mystical people. They believe during these 10 days that the books in heaven are opened. Amen? And your life is examined. This is what the Jews, so 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 they so that during those ten days they're spending a lot of time uh, in, in what's called Tashiva or repentance. They're making sure. <laughs> I did it the other day that in here. I went before the Lord uh, over an issue, over something like I want to make sure, you know. I don't know if y'all ever done that before. You could do it, you don't have to be it doesn't have to be a mystical thing. It is a mystical thing. But uh, going into the courts of heaven, you can do it by faith. Amen. Uh, I, I was in out here praying, and I, I thought, you know, I was kind of overcome with some things, and I, I just saw that there, and before the the bench, you know, a judge's bench, and uh, I could see this thing. I could see that uh, there's the accuser, you know, Satan's called the accuser of the brother. I can see you right there, and he just started railing off on me, man. He said, he said, he's talking to the judge. He said, don't you know this man? Don't, don't you know he's, he's uh, disobeyed you? He's, that he's in his past. He started bringing up all kinds of stuff in my past and, and mistakes. I'm, like, I'm not talking about, you know, the sins of the South, smoking, drinking, and cussing. I'm talking about things where you just, God told you to do something, and you just, mm -hmm. I didn't, you didn't do it. Not, uh, I would say out of just rebellion, but just uh, maybe out of fear. That's what gets me. It's just like, I thought the Lord would say something to me about that. And I'll just like be chicken out on it. I know y'all are not like that. <clears throat> I'm not accusing him. I'm accusing myself. He was the accuser. He was the accuser of all that stuff. And you know what? I found myself, I just say, you know what? How many of y'all want to argue? A lot of people are argumentative, aren't they? Don't you like to argue? Mm -hmm. This is one place you do not want to argue. Mm -hmm. that, that scripture, Jesus said, he said, a great, it, when, you're, when you're on your way to court, he's talking about natural, he said, he said, your adversary is with you, your accuser is with you, he said, agree with your adversary. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. that's, about, that, that's right on par with that thing about praying for your enemies mm -hmm. in popularity. You understand? You don't want to agree with your adversary, but he said to agree with your adversary. Why? Because in this in this situation, as we get to agree, I said, I, you know, I know I did it. My conscience. I'm trying to deal with my conscience. I said, I know I did it. I'm not going to make up any excuses. But I, I, you know, I'm it's just I'm between me and God and, and the devil. I know that I've, that I've done this. I agree. I agree with you. I agree. I did it. You know, I think what Kevin said. I said what I was watching. I think it's when you girls were up there at Nashville. Oh, maybe there's another one. He said, he said, he said, a lot of times he said, I just turned myself in. Yeah. You ever heard him say that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you know you're something pursuing you, you're getting ready to run you down. Just turn yourself in. <laughs> give up. You know what I'm saying? Give up. I'm not saying give it in to the devil, but just give up to throw yourself on the mercy of the court. That's what it is. I, the Lord, I did all this stuff. He said, I, I realize this. Listen, I realize this. There's not one thing that I can do or can't do that, the, that what Jesus did can, can not take care of. Amen. Did I say that right? Amen. Amen. Yes. 
There's not one thing. In all those mistakes, Jesus, Jesus is my righteousness. Amen. Yes. And even anything good I did, Jesus is my righteousness. Right. You know, I tell you, in the, and especially in these days. Now, I, I'm not. We're not Jewish. We don't. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us to do this. But in your these next just ten days, you know, Jesus has already been our uh, Yom Yom Kippur, our he, our day of atonement. He's, he's done. We talked about that last week. But it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt anybody to uh, examine. Like when we do communion, it says, "Judge yourself, so you won't be judged of the world." And then condemn the world. When I say judge, I'm not saying beat yourself up, condemn yourself, but it let, allow just examine that and just just examine yourself. Paul said, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. You understand? You know, y'all follow me? Yes, yes. See if you're, you know, just you keep a good, a clean conscience before God and man. If you can keep a good conscience, you know what a conscience is. You know, you know inside. A hey, well, Christian, non Christian, everybody's born with conscience. But especially a Christian, you know what's right and wrong on the inside. You know when you missed it. You know when you messed up. Now, over time, if you if you develop a, a ego problem or a pride problem or whatever, you can start covering it up. You can start hardening your heart. Where it's, it's, God forbid, don't let, ever let your conscience get hard. Amen. Amen. When you get born again, you got a new, a new conscience, a, a fresh conscience. Amen. That's why. Amen. How many of y'all remember when you got born again? It's like you know, that weight lifted off of you Amen. when you came. To, it's like something just lifted off of you. It just it yeah. did lift off of you. Yeah. you that, the, all the weight on your conscience was lifted off yeah. of you because yeah. you, at, the, at least for that moment when you received Christ, that that was a literal something literally happened. You were made clean. Amen. Amen. Now you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have to live. You're gonna make mistakes. You know that's what First John one nine. I made fun of the the, uh, the red heifers who got in trouble about that, but that that symbolizes this First John one nine. Once and for all, Jesus has taken our sins. There's no more sacrifice for sin. There is no more sacrifice. Amen. There's no other way. There's no other way place to go. Amen. So after you get, you get your sins are forgiven, you're clean, you're white, you're snow, your sins are snow, to be scarred, you're white as snow, you're listed. Then, then the, if you mess up, now you're going to mess up. I'm not prophesying over it, it's just I've been around people long enough, especially myself. You're going to mess up. That's what 1 John 1 9 is. It's, it's if you confess your sin, why do you confess your sin? You know, God knows what you did. Yeah, but he wants you to acknowledge to yourself. Exactly. You know, what do people call about you? Get out of denial. <laughs> you know, just just confess it. To you, you, know, you don't have to go to somebody. You don't have to go to a priest or something. Confess it. Sometimes it helps sometimes to, to, to confess to somebody else, but you better really be careful who you confess to. Exactly. Sure. I mean, that's why in the Catholic Church, and I'm not promoting that, but the priests are sworn, the confessional is a, is a sacred thing. That's one thing I admire about them. Any sin that's confessed to a priest, they're sworn, even if the law cannot subpoena them to reveal what was confessed. And I tell you, you have to give them that, to admire that. Yep. Because most, most people in, in the evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, whatever circle, if you talk to somebody and tell them to get something off your chest, uh, more likely they're going to they're going to tell somebody else and, and scandalize you. Amen. But you get but Jesus, thank God, Jesus can keep a secret. Amen. Amen. So it's Amen. the first child one. I says confess your sin, and it says this about him. He says he's faithful. Mm -hmm. He's not faithless. That's right. He keeps Amen. faith. Amen. Amen. It's important to keep. If we can develop this, as God wants us to develop, to, to be able to be faithful, and that doesn't mean just showing up. It, it does mean showing up for when you need to show up, but to be consistent and trustworthy. That's right. Amen. Is this happening? Amen. He's talking to you. Amen. <coughs> be consistent, trustworthy. He's faithful and just. That means he's righteous. 
He did, he'll always do the right thing. God, listen, Yahweh will always do the right thing. Yes, he will. He's a just God. Yes, he is. Amen. I mean, if you look back at the whole story about Jesus, why Jesus came, it was about God's justice. Yes. So no one could, uh, no one could accuse him of being an unjust God. Saying this, saying, Lord, I didn't ask to be born into this world, of, uh, the sinful world. I didn't ask to be born like this. I didn't ask to, uh, you know, and, and, to, and he knew that ahead of time. and said, I'll prove my justice and my righteousness in that before the, the, the foundation, before the, the world is created, the universe is created, before the lamb will be slain, the sacrificial lamb, Jesus, will be slain. That happened in the realm of the spirit before the universe was ever created. In order that nobody could steal that, nobody could take it away. That God could be proved just. He's just. You can't say he's not just. He, 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 he gave it his very self. See, Jesus was God in the flesh. He was an incarnation of Yahweh. He came and gave his self for you. It's, it's bad theology to think, you know, that God was, God's hacked off at people, so he's, if Jesus volunteers to go down and, and stand in the gap for you because the Father's bad. No, that was the Father had become, had come to himself, had come Amen. down Amen. in the flesh. Amen. You understand that? He's not putting it off. Jesus didn't bail you out from a, a mean old God. No, it was, the, it was who you think so mean, oh God, it actually became a person. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Romans, I uh, believe Romans 8 says, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was so very rich, he became so very poor, that you might become enriched or abundantly supplied. What's he talking about? That's God himself has come down and limited himself to a human being so he could demonstrate he could, he could demonstrate what was invisible to you. And, and through Christ, through the cross, that's what's so great about the cross, it was a demonstration of the mercy of God. Amen. Mm. You can't accuse God. Amen. You can't accuse him. I mean, you can accuse him, but you have no basis for accusing him. Because he gave himself. He said, I'll come down, I'll come down and lay down my life. I'll become a human and I'll lay down my life for you. To show you how much I love you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Yes. Amen. That you could be restored yes. in your mind back to me. Yes. So I don't believe God was ever mad at you. No, he wasn't. People, that's a, that's the story of religion. You'll beat people in hell. God's mad at you. He's going to get you for that. But no, he loves you. It's in the dark. Paul said it's in the darkness of your mind that you were alienated from him. You thought he was mad. You thought he, he was going to punish you. There's a punishment. There's a judgment for those that reject him if they know according to what they know. Amen. God's not going around killing people that don't know anything about Jesus. You know, I'm going to think. I mean, I'm not a universalist. I don't believe everybody's saved. I believe, yeah, I do believe everybody's saved. I believe that this, you know, everybody hasn't received yet. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I don't care. I really don't care. If people like I am. I, 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 would, I, I, would, I want to see people. I do. I want to see people uh, saved. Amen. Amen. I don't want to see them going to hell. Church has used it so long just because you didn't like somebody, you don't send them to hell. Now, I agree with you. It seems like there's a lot of people around, and especially politicians, that, you know, maybe that's why hell was made, but I don't know. <laughs> but that's not up to make the judge. I got in trouble right. about that, judging somebody about that. Well, I'm not going to go there. Or, but Jesus said, he said, repent, change your mind. Why? Change your mind. Because he said the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, turn over with me to, to Romans. Uh, or you can look right up there, if you can see that. Turn up to the Romans, the 14th chapter of Romans. Is this okay? <coughs> I didn't get any amen. I guess it is. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 14. Let me see, make sure I get this right. Uh, 
Yeah, keep praying for me. There we go, verse 17. Romans 4, uh, Romans uh, 14, start verse 17. This again, this is the this is the American standard. It says, for the kingdom, say kingdom. Kingdom. <clears throat> use the word dominion. Kingdom or dominion. The kingdom of God, before it said the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is just where it comes from, God to it belongs to. Amen. <laughs> the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. Now this is, in context, this is talking about, Paul's talking about uh, that there were, people were eating things, sacrificed to idols. Uh, Paul said, listen, that's, that meat's not going to hurt you just because it was sacrificed to an idol, but some people believe it is. So for conscious, conscious, their, their conscience, don't do it around them. Amen? Don't do it because they have a weak conscience. They're, see, sometimes you have, people have weak consciences. Yeah. Things bother them. You know, they, you know, I could get in trouble real quick. It's, it's hard to talk about stuff like this without people thinking, uh, you know, like Paul said, don't let your liberty be an excuse for your flesh to do with your flesh. Amen. But the limited the mercy and the grace of God are, are far vaster uh, than we can ever conceive. Amen. 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 So what Paul said, this is in context. He said that you, some people are going to the, because they can go, it'd be like now, <clears throat> with the, uh, the prices were so high. If there was a place you could go get cheap uh, beef, you, you'd probably go get it, right? You know, get your T-bone or something, you know, half price. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it was. They would, back then, they would offer the meat to the idols. Not, not the Christians, not the Jews, but there were people that did this. This was in you know, Rome. And so they, they would take this, they'd offer it up to them, you know, the people that worship idols, and then they'd take the meat and then sell it after it had been used for the ceremony. And so the, some of the Christians would go into the meat market and they'd say, here's a T-bone here, a T-bone there. One has been offered up to an idol, one of them's not, and this one's half price, you know, what would you do? You, know, you ever go to that part of the, 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 the market, you know, the meat market where they have stuff that's just about to expire? I live there. <laughs> I mean, you know, aged, aged beef is better than, you know, that's, that's really better beef than other stuff. <clears throat> And what they're getting, so the Christians are, some of the, the weaker Christians, the weaker conscience, they don't understand who they are in Christ, don't know the liberty of Christ, don't know, understand the grace really, fully, God's grace and faith when it comes to faith in what Jesus did. They would uh, get, begin to accuse the other Christians of eating that meat. And it was creating a, a division, a division. Almost, and they say, "Well, that's what they, the, Lord, we, the Lord wants to work on that, especially in this fellowship. There are all these divisions we have. All of us got different opinions, different ways of looking at things, <clears throat> and and if we allow it, it will it cause us to be divided. Yes. And then that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants you divided." Because we, we devil's right this morning, we get an agreement over a microphone, God do a miracle. Amen. 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 And I don't know that we'll ever come, all come into agreement with, with all doctors, well, doctors, teachings and stuff, you know, but we do, can't come in agreement with the fact who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. And who he is to us. Amen. Are you there? So they were, they were, it was causing division. So Paul said this, and this is where this famous scripture comes from. 17 says, he said, listen, guys <coughs> and gals, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. He said, that's, that was Jewish stuff. That was the old covenant stuff. They had, they couldn't eat, you know, they couldn't put a, a milk product on the same plate as a, as a meat product. And, 
you know, it was all about food and all this stuff. And a lot of this stuff, dietary stuff, was good stuff. You kept them from dying. You ought to try to keep them alive. But they made a religious thing out of it and worshiped. And so Paul's pouring out, we're not going back under that. He says, for the kingdom of God, listen, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. Uh, or meat or whatever the king says, it's meat or drink. It's not eating or drinking. But what is the kingdom? The kingdom it, it is righteousness, what's right, peace, shalom, shalom, yes. and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let me look, let me, I was, just, it's good to look at another translation. Let's look at this. This is what the passage says. Look at it. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules. I like that. It's not a matter of rules. Do you realize that, that you know, you ought to appreciate this church. We don't have any rules. And a lot of people find that uh, very upsetting. Y'all don't have enough rules. What do y'all believe about this? What do you believe about this? Uh, do you allow Do you allow women to minister? Uh, do you Do you allow speak? I ain't got no rules. I, you understand what I'm talking about? There's no rules in this church. Praise God. I'm not going to tell you what to believe. Right. You say, Well, you can't go. I can't go to that church because the pastor wants me to believe this. You're not here. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Some of you ain't even saved. I ain't throwing you out. <laughs> no, really. I'm not judging you, but I don't know who, who's really saved in here or not. I mean, what, what am I going to do? You can't come in here. You can't take communion because you don't, you're don't. you not a member of this church. That's it. That's a rule. A lot of churches, you can't take communion unless you're a member of that church and have been baptized in that church. Even if you've been baptized in some other church. That's a rule. It's a dumb rule. Dumb. Say dumb rule. Dumb. Dumb. Don't not put anybody up. Come on. Well, Brother Rich, is anybody be just coming up here and taking communion? Uh, really? Just like just like anybody could come up here and get be getting saved. Mm -hmm. We just don't want anybody getting saved. <laughs> is that a dumb rule? Or we don't want just anybody getting filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. You, you know, they might not be living right. Well, poor Holy Spirit, he didn't know he should be inhabited and living, <laughs> spilling them and giving them utterance. Yeah, poor Holy Spirit. We, we ain't got, he's got on to be with the Lord. I hope he's with the Lord. <laughs> he used to get so mad about uh, tongues. Because we would always pray. As a congregation, worship it in the spirit. If you feel, I'm not saying you're not filled, you can't, you can't be there. You know, well, we did it. We always did that. Y'all started out. It, we worship. It, we pray. We don't, it's nothing like now like it used to be. We, we go on 30, 40, 50, 50 minutes just singing and talking. And this particular guy, he just couldn't stand it. He said, you, that's not right. The Bible plainly says, if you need an interpreter, he quoted uh, Corinthians, you know, and I said, that, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about, Paul's talking about a, a ministry gift. Mm -hmm. If somebody gives a tongue, you know, somebody needs to get them interpreted, right. or sh shut your mouth. That's right. That's right. But as a congregation worshiping the Lord, he said worship him in spirit and in truth. Right. Or worship it, worship it in the spirit, worship it in the in the natural. I mean, worship with your mind, worship it, yeah. Yes. So if I, I'm the I'm the, the pastor, you know, there ain't nobody's. Now, if one of y'all jumped up right now, started giving a tug out. Really, I've had this happen. We, you've been around here long, you know. It. You know, we had some but guy. He had what I call a, a kung fu tongue. <laughs> I'd be riding a little preacher and he'd jump up and go, and I'd go like this. And we had poor lot it was your mom. It was I could watch her doors I could just watch her like terror come over because she was raised a Baptist. What she wouldn't y'all write that? And just terror come over this poor lady. I said I'm very tolerant about this stuff. Y'all y'all know I'm tolerant, man. 
to Oliver Tower, and I let that go in about three weeks. And we, I mean, the Spirit of God would be moving. He just, the Holy Spirit, he was just moving. It, you could tangibly feel the Holy Spirit. This guy would jump up and just go, and then the Spirit of God would go, Pew! So I, 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 he did it. The, it might be my temple. I, I looked at him. I said, I said, listen. Either give an interpretation of that or shut your mouth. Don't ever uh, go do it more. He probably did lose my temper. But and he, and he and his partner say they didn't show up next Sunday. So I don't know. Huh. And people say, you're too hard on people, brother. Said, no, I'm bigger slip. Soft, yeah, I am. No rules. So it gets out of order, you deal with it. Amen. Yes, yes. Decent order. I mean, that was indecent. <laughs> Are y'all out there? But I'm not going to, don't get scared. Of that. Pray it does. You're free to do that. Amen. Amen. Free to worship the Lord, Spirit. Amen. And if you if you don't pray in tongues, that's you know you can be it's your it's a gift to God. You can be filled. But I'm not going to say, well, you're not saved because you don't pray in tongues. Sure. It's crazy. Sure. Come on, you can get healed. Yeah. Believe it, heal it. But if you don't get healed, we still love you. Amen. 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 No, uh, do we? Mm -hmm. Huh? You want to go to a doctor? Go to a doctor. That's fine. I mean, come on. I ain't gonna, there's no rules in there. You know? We can't. We belong to this church. We can't go to doctor. <laughs> well, you're an idiot if you stay there. True. Amen. Are you out there? Yeah. There's liberty. You want to have yes. liberty? Amen. But don't want to be in case you're in flesh. So, like doing something dumb. You should be able to be correct. If you're in here, you should be able to be, able to be corrected in love and not get offended. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. For the kingdom of God, it's not a matter of rules. I like that. But about food and drink, and you could say it's not a matter of rules about whether you can and cannot take communion, whether you can and cannot be water baptized. We baptize. I baptize. There's a baptism right there. I believe in water baptism, but I'll say it with the case of us. We have baptized people with a, with a glass of water. I baptized my grandfather on his deathbed, well, a year before he died, with a glass of water. I couldn't get him in a bathtub or get him to a church or what. If he wanted to be baptized, I baptized him. I poured a glass of water over him. And maybe that doesn't meet your formula, I don't know. But, but I did it by faith, and he received it by faith, and he was, he was it worked. Amen. Because sure. everything works by faith. Yeah. Right. Sure. Amen. Are you out there? Amen. We got. Listen, I realize we need we need a culture. God wants us to, to have a culture. You know, a culture is important. I admire. I, I admire. One thing I admire about uh, the Hasidic Jews is they have a very strong culture. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a Jew. I believe in Jesus. They, they're waiting for Messiah to come. But the, I'll admire the culture. Well, they'll stick together. They'll help each other. They, they love each other, you know. Sure. And we ought to be like that, too. Are you out there? Mm -hmm. And we're all going to be different. We're all different. Y'all all didn't believe. If y'all knew half the stuff I really believe, y'all probably wouldn't even come in here. <laughs> And I could be wrong about half of it. I don't know. I know what I know, but I know something. I know what I don't know. Amen. They were scared y'all now. Right? <laughs> I was talking with a brother, uh, my my covering. We the the topic came up about uh, came up about uh, end time, you know, eschatology. And I told him mine. I said, I, I guess you cut me off now. He said, no, I don't believe that, but he said, I agree, you know, we'll agree to disagree. 
because none of you know what the end time is. We talked about this morning, sitting on the, sitting on my porch drinking coffee. Somebody I had, well, I don't say I admire them, but they were close to somebody I did admire. Them. <clears throat> this time last year predicted, what was yesterday? What date was it? 24th. Was yesterday the 24th? Let's make sure now. They predicted that, that Jesus was going to return. They had it all lined out to it. And, this, and this, this person was not your typical end time preacher. I mean, that somebody I would have never thought would have ever come to that conclusion. And, you know, come and gone, and, and we're still here, I guess. Y'all know anybody that's missing in y'all's family? <laughs> she had look at her. She don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she had all figured out that Jesus is going to come back where all going to be raptured out. And get Jesus, I don't know where I was yesterday, but I missed it. Yes, we all did. Have y'all noticed any churches right here that uh, the parking lots are empty? <laughs> I'll tell me about it now because I don't want to make sure I didn't miss it. So. <laughs> didn't see it on Facebook. I've got her to laugh. That's all I was <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> didn't see it on Facebook. Not <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Put a little, we said a little notice. So this is disinformation. <laughs> I bet y'all never got a disinformation sticker on your Facebook page. Yeah, praise the Lord. You join the club. <laughs> but the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food or drink, about end times of theology, <laughs> <laughs> about what you ought to wear to church, or whatever. But but it, what is it? What is the kingdom of God? It is the realm of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that realm is filled, listen, it's filled with righteousness, yeah. it's filled with peace, yeah. it's filled with joy. Yeah. I, like, I like that church, don't you? Amen. Uh, shalom, yeah, filled with righteous, people do the right thing, because Jesus did the right thing. Yes. It's filled with shalom, filled with peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, healing, yeah, glory, prosperity. Are you against yeah. prosperity? Yeah. I'm against that prosperity message. Now, you want to be poor and broke, huh? Is that what you want? I'm against people extorting money out of people. But I'm not against, I don't, shalom is prosperity. It's part of it's prosperity. God wants you to prosper, but it helps. Even if your soul prospers. Yeah. He delights. It says, the psalm says, he delights yes. in the prosperity of his servant. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't lie, if you come in agreement with him, get me. Yeah. Hey, God, make you a billionaire. Amen. So somebody said something about you. I was praying, God, that God make me a millionaire. And the other person said, why don't you ask him? If you want to ask him and believe him, why don't you believe him and be a millionaire? The million dollars don't go far nowadays. It really doesn't. Yeah. I know people that, that live in houses that cost $500,000. That's a half a million dollars. And they're not that great a house. I mean, it's a pretty nice house. Come on. Maybe you live in some place that didn't cost it. Money. But nowadays, a, a half a million dollars. If you go to California, yeah. how long ago? My, my nephew, uh, all my family lived in California. He had a little apartment. He was paying $2,000. This was like, golly, was this 15, 20 years ago? He was paying $2,000 for a one bedroom apartment. He said, this house, right there, the house, the family house, house that the Lord blesses with, he's paid for. He said, this house right here will be a million dollar house, easy, or over a million dollar house, easy, in California. That was 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Now it would be two, five million dollars. No. <laughs> you don't think so? No, a million. I've seen some mighty brown circle houses on them shows that go more. Three bedroom, one bath. Of course, location is everything. Mississippi, California, a lot different. Praise God. I never thought I'd be praising God to live in Mississippi. Praise the Lord. Hey, you out there? I love California all my life. I, I love Arizona. California. I want to go back. Okay, well. Why do you think I have a shirt that says, just Arizona girl in a Mississippi? Oh, I stirred up a devil. <laughs> <laughs> I said, California, not Arizona. Yeah, I know. I have family out there. How do you tell me? Oh, wow. I didn't. I was born of Ventura. Wow. Yeah. 
Both my brothers lived up north and in LA, Huntington Beach. I'm just saying the condition of that state right now is not very good. Yeah. Yeah, so sad. Yeah. Thank God I'm in Mississippi. Yeah. I never thought I'd ever thank God for that. Praise God. <laughs> for the kingdom of God is not a matter or of rules about food or drink, but is it it is in the realm of the Holy Spirit filled with righteousness, peace, peace, joy. and joy. Serving the anointed one by walking these and in these kingdoms. Listen to this. I'm just gonna read this to you. I get through. Serving the anointed one, Christ, by walking in these kingdom realities pleases God. Do you realize that? That that makes God happy when you walk in righteousness, peace, and joy. Amen. What a punishment to have to walk in righteousness, peace, and joy. He says, serving the anointed one by walking in these kingdom reality. Reality, say realities. Reality. Real life, pleases God and earns the respect of others. So then, make it, it, make it your top. What would you say? Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is work at hand. Amen. So, so make it your top priority to live a life of peace with harmony in your relationships. Uh oh, then we're gonna start talking on toes. So make it your top priority. What is listen, honestly ask yourself, what is my top priority? Now not your not your church answer now, your your Monday answer. That's right. What is your top top priority? What do you live with what does it say here? Your top priority is to live a, a life of peace and harmony in your relationships. That would be include Jesus. Amen. Right. But it does not exclude everybody else. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. <laughs> I got an amen out of a young person. It means you're preaching good. <laughs> amen. Listen, don't just don't get so dang religious, Debrie. <laughs> to, all my top priority is Jesus. Ah, how can you love God? He can't see when you don't love your brother. I'm not accusing you, because I know you love people. I can pick on you. Don't say you love God. He, you cannot see when you can't love your brother. He can do so. Amen. That's right. I think it, I got my boots on, brother. You want to step on the top of Huh? Come on now. All right. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> we can't be going around saying we love you. Not, 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 forget, she loves Jesus, okay? Forget I said anything like that. I'm just messing with her. What, we, I'm talking about myself. Let me pick on myself. How can we say we love Jesus? He's a, my top, Jesus is my top priority when people are not my top priority today. Amen. We ought to say, let's, let's say we're working on this. We're working on it. Thank you, Sister yeah. Pamela. Yeah. She knows she's working on it. She has to live with it. <laughs> so then, make it your top priority to live in peace and harmony in your relationships. Eagle, listen to this one. Maybe we, had to, we might be going too far here. Eagerly seeking, eagerly seeking to strengthen and encourage one another. Amen. 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 That's right. Well, I can't wait to get to church so I can encourage somebody. That's right. Yeah, I know that, but let's talk about church right now. Well, this is important. We need, this is one thing. I, 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 for years, in teaching people that church didn't save them, I went overboard and, and, and gave people the impression that it wasn't important to be part of church. That, that was a mistake. That's one thing I had to answer in the courts. Y'all talk about the court brother that was in the court? Mm -hmm. It's important for y'all to come to church. Is sure. church going to take you to heaven? No. no. But you need, we need one another. Amen. I need y'all. You need me. Amen. We right. you need your neighbor. Amen. I don't care what they look like or who they are or what color they are or what. You need them. Amen. I never talk about stuff like this, about the body. Every joint supplies. Yeah, Every right. joint supplies. Yeah. Every yeah. You might be a big toe or you may be an earlobe, but you're, well, that's, 
after the body's not complete. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's Are you out there? Amen. It's just not going to work. <laughs> There's a core. I've told you. I've always thought this. Thing. We've done it. There is a corporate anointing. It is a corporate order. I, I've had a hard time getting that dang microphone to work by myself. Huh? Are you out there? We need we need everybody. That we need them. We need young people. Y'all young people. Y'all these old crazy old people. We got, they drug us in here to church and they made us sit here and listen. Forever. No, we need y'all. Y'all are the future. Amen. That's right. Good yes. grief. We're all going to be gone today. Hallelujah. 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 Right. You can take it, y'all. Go ahead. Praise Jesus. You think I'm not being a hen? Everybody say, thank God he's not being a hen. Thank God he's not being a hen. Deeply loved. Deeply loved. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's, increase your faith, Lord. <laughs> That's why you tell the disciples. So how many Amen. times you gotta forgive? Amen. So, yeah, okay. Come on then. That would be too much agreement with me. Okay. So make it your top priority to live a life of peace and harmony in your relationships, eagerly seeking to strengthen and encourage one another. Stop stop ruining listen to this. Stop ruining the work of God. Amen. By insisting that on your own opinions. Now, he says right here about food or about tongues or about yes. healing or about whatever. I'm not talking about watering down the gospel. We don't want to water down. Jesus is the healer. Amen. He is the prosperer. Amen. He is the deliverer. Yes. He's the baptizer of the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. He ain't watering nothing down. Yes. I'm just saying, but quit running the work of God by insisting that your own opinions is the only way you make a live by it. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Right. Do y'all agree with me, brother? Yeah. Because he's talking about the food right here, but you can put, you can fill in the blanks. You can eat anything you want. You can eat anything you want. Yeah. But it is wrong to deliberately cause someone to be offended over what you eat. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If I deliberately do something just to just to hack you off. Because I got liberty. I'm, I'm ruining the work of God. See, we've got to take it to the way we look at stuff in those days. Amen? I mean, certain things most Christians, I talk traditional Christianity, won't object to <coughs> and make, a, make an issue out of it. Man, I, I, I can't even go. See, I don't even have the liberty to go there with, with y'all. Because it don't it don't line up with don't jihad with what you've been taught and believe. Amen. So if I'm gonna argue with you about the, uh, uh, your opinion, now you go to the word with me. Go to the word. Go to the word. I don't, we're not talking about going contrary to the Bible, okay? But your opinion about something, or my opinion, or something. It's, it literally says, I'm gonna try to close this out. It says, listen. He says you're running the work of God. You get along, you get, I mean, there's, uh, not, uh, it's, your, it's your work, you work, your work, you can talk about that this morning, but to see the guy who'd like to pray. Right? It would might irritate me, too. I mean, I tell you. But, is he a Christian? Is he a believer? You don't even think he's a Christian, do you? <laughs> he might not, but I don't. I'm not judging. You're not judging. Yes, you are. You know you are. It's all right. You're supposed to judge all things. But I'm trying to say this is, uh, there's people that, uh, that I, I disagree with that I have to learn to just, you understand? I, want, I don't want to destroy the work of God. Amen. Because good Amen. Lord, Amen. I don't know everything. Amen. I might know more than they do. But uh, who's to say they they got time to learn? The guy can teach them something. They can teach me something. Yeah. Are you out there? Yeah, Let's be. I mean, come on. Yeah. Amen. Let's 
like, that's why I put, I'm gonna finish with this. That's why I might put her hands right here. Yeah. This thing goes. Yeah, See how it works? If I go there. That means you can open it or you can shut it. Amen. Yes. Sometimes it's good to shut it. Amen. Amen. Consider it an act of love to refrain from eating uh, meat or drinking wine or doing anything else that would cause your fellow believer to be offended and tempted to be weakened in his place. Mm -hmm. Keep the convictions you have about this, uh, these matters to you, between yourself. Listen, I'm gonna finish. I am gonna finish. Keep your convictions you have about these matters to, between yourself and God. Amen. Amen. Don't impose them on others. That's right. Praise God. Come on. Don't impose them on others. Yes. You'll be happy when you don't when you don't judge yourself in doing what your conscience approves. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Um, Amen. You'll be happy. You'll be happy when you don't judge yourself in doing what your conscience approves. So you can be at odds with yourself. Amen. Okay, I got, I'm sorry. Praise God. Praise I'm, I, we're gonna we're gonna keep staying on this sometime. Amen. Because we need this. We're gonna build the body. Guys, will build a build a body. Amen. 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 Build a body. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I would you, you tell us something. Yeah. Go ahead. You young man. Where's the rich guy? You want to you want to put you want to put in work, huh? He can help. Just you want to help? You don't want to? You can. I tried to I tried to get you included. We're gonna let you out of here. There's there's three awaiting. Oh, <laughs> God's good. He's good. You know, the Bible seems to have all the answers. Listen to that. Now, check yourself out. Now, don't be starting to get upset. You know, I even love California. Well, I didn't get my call that touch the subject of California. See, what bothers me about California because the government's so messed up. I love California. But right, our the mission was right down from San Diego over in New Mexico. I love California. It's a beautiful place. It just it just really bothers me that the common communists have taken it over. <coughs> Not all of them. I think thirty percent of the population might be over. Amen. Ideas matter. I mean, God ideas will change your life. Devil ideas will change your life. You know, make sure you're, you're thinking of God thoughts. Amen? Amen. Thank you. I even got used to her right now. Can you give me a cup, sir? Yeah, good job. We'll get out of the early today. Praise God. Yay! <laughs> You ever think you thanks? Who said amen? Praise God. If you're at home watching this, get you, this, is, this is irreverent, Brother Richard. You're, you're a comedian in an irreverent manner. No, no. I'm reverent. This, this stuff is my life. But amen. Amen. This bread, this bread of life. Amen. Yeah. You know, I'll get some, get you some bread. Take you some, uh, take you some juice. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Praise God. So on the night Jesus was betrayed, listen to it. Get you, get your bread up here. Hold up. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. Mm. He said, "This is my body." Yeah. Whoa, glory to God. This is my body. That's what we, we need to see each other. Take communion together. We're all joint protecting each other in common. One body. Say one body. One, one body. body. This is my body. It's, I'm, it, and I'm giving it to you. 
Amen. So, Jesus was filled with all the fullness of God. That's what it says. He had the full, Jesus had the fullness of the Spirit. When he, when he was crucified, dead, buried, he ascended, and when he rose, he gave gifts to men. He sent back the Holy he spoke that he was filled with the Holy Spirit completely. He had all the fullness of the Holy Spirit. When he went to when he went back to heaven, the Holy Spirit, he sent the Holy Spirit back. Mm -hmm. To dwell in what? One person? One person. All of us. No, all of us. All, all, of, us. all of us. I say that's an awesome responsibility. I don't care what you look like, smell like, whatever. Yeah, you've got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Right. Amen. Not all 